Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. Mimi Chan, who has been trying to talk to us. Finally. (laughs) Guys, this is Sifu Mimi Chan of the Sifu Mimi Chan Show who passed a bill successfully in Florida to have Asian American history uh, taught in schools. Mimi, I won't take up any more of your time. You have 10 minutes with us. I know, I know. It's so quick. Olivia, I, long last. I feel like this is a long time coming. Perry, my dear friend, always good to see you. Hey, and Miranda, well. oh my goodness. So nice to meet you. Happy <laughs> to meet you. I'm so happy. And like, we only have 10 minutes, but I'm going to say, I hope to have each of you on for more extended interview at some point. But um, as we just discussed, I'm absolutely an advocate for Asian American history and education, not just for our kids, though. You know, film and TV like this allows our adults to also learn a piece of our history, right? And this is this is of course fiction, but there's so much of it that's rooted in historical fiction that there's there's different um episodes that have events that happened. And of course, this show doesn't just tackle that, but it also tackles LGBTQ representation. Both of these things super important to me. And I just love to hear from each of you, especially in this grouping I have right here, you know, why do you think these stories are so important to tell? So whoever wants to jump in first. Uh, if I may, only because I, I didn't get a chance to answer a really important question earlier about what does family mean in Warrior. Sure. So, you know, if you know Asian American history, you know that Chinese Chinatowns were bachelor societies. And that's because of an 1875 law called the Page Act that prevented Asian women from entering the country. And that law was strictly made to prevent Asians from having families in America, from starting roots in America. So... That's why there are no women in Chinatown when the Assam first enters and say, how come there are no women here? But, you know, I, I don't think they could have written because of the 1875 Page Act that prevented women from coming into the country. <laughs> right. So because of that, um, because there were, uh, Chinatown was a bachelor society, the Tongs were their families. The Tongs took care of you. The Tongs, if you were sick, supported you. That when you die, the Tongs sent your body home. So the Tongs were your family. And that's why that the brotherhood was so important to Assam to join the brothers or not, you know, because you had no one else looking after you. Yeah. And uh, that's a part of our history that uh, that um, you learn from watching Warrior. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Olivia, you want to jump in? Yeah, I, I think our show, I think what our show does in such a great way is it doesn't bash anyone over the head with our history. It's just the world that we exist in. And so it creates this really rich tapestry with all these threads that if you go, did that really happen? Were there really these riots? Were Asian women really treated like this? Are these crib brothels a real thing? Uh, Who is Nellie's character based on? There was really a woman named Donald Dean Cameron. Wait, there was a real odd toy who used the American court system in her favor to battle the tongs and customers who uh, tried to, you know, um, give her fake gold. Um, There is so much richness that we're actually drawing from. And I think for people within our community who don't know so much of their own history, that is so important. And I think it's also so important for people outside of our community to understand where the model minority myth comes from and how it was a survival tactic for us that even right now as we try to unpack it and you know create bridges with other cultures to battle the same systems that are oppressing and hurting so many of us regardless of our ethnicities, um, I think Warrior does a really good job of putting all these little Easter eggs in to a package that is really entertaining and uh, uplifting and engaging. Yeah, perfect, thank you. I think too speaking to the the LGBT sto- you know storylines LGBTQ that, that that you know the, these women are written as humans who have fallen in love in deep real profound love and and that I think was is a is an exceptional way to write something where it could, they could have made it all about the period and that struggle but we've seen elements of that struggle before. I think what what they're so clever at doing in this show is just showing a slightly different color, a different 
uh, a different aspect to something so that actually these are two very strong women. They're not two very apologetic women. We've already got the setting of a brothel where kind of anything goes, you know, so it's not it's not the the shock of um, a woman making love to a woman. It's more the that the the everyday you know, trauma that everyone is living, just trying to find happiness and feel somehow that they that they might deserve it in some way. Yeah, absolutely. And it was, um, especially this last season, very heart wrenching. Lots of tears, lots of tears, and just so much um, that went into this. But um, particularly, you two here, my my ladies in in the house, um, strong female characters, just as you said, and I really that really resonated with me on a personal level, but also kind of taken aback to like, how much have we really, you know, grown in society? Like where have the winds been? Where has the, we still have so much to go because I feel like so much of your character still resonates with women today. Are there parts of your character that you um, kind of play into going, you know what, this isn't just like you said, a time period, but like, this is something I need to um, push for and like, you know, kind of push the envelope on because of what you're, representing for women now because there's so much of it I feel like that is just applicable to this time period not just you know at that time I think for you know I think I think for me and they've heard you say this like five times but what I really appreciate about how our show writes for women is that it doesn't shy away from letting us be ugly it doesn't shy away from letting us be fierce and violent and you know goddesses they're they're, they're not just like you know um out there being, you know, loving and benevolent. That's part of it. Yeah, I was, I was just saying that what I appreciate about Warrior as a show and how it represents women on screen is it gives us characters who are so multifaceted and it allows us to be angry, to be violent, to, you know, be vulnerable, to be just as fragile as we are strong. And I think that kind of multidimensional representation gives women out there in life permission to own all of these different aspects of themselves. Um, and I think in a, a, in a narrative that has too long been like, okay, you're either the nice girl or you're not. You're either a whore or you're not. To be able to show that we have all kinds of colors. I think that's really important as we really evolve what our understanding of women on screen is. Yeah. So well put. Um, the, the question, Miranda, was really just kind of how your character as a female in the show, you know, the evolution of it in terms of period now and and back then. It's like there are some w ways that we've come a long way and some ways we're still kind of in that in that time period. Are there anything in your character or anything that you portray that you feel like, um, you know, you utilize in terms of like bringing uh, inspiration to that character or, you know, anything that resonates with why you um you know put forth the action that you do for for her yeah well do you know I, I was thinking actually Olivia was giving an answer before and I was sort of thinking of acting opposite her and I remember when I was at drama school we had this incredible uh, acting coach Hilary Wood who said to us if ever you want to move people with tears try not to cry use the muscles that you would use to try not to cry tighten your throat hold it, you fight, fight those tears and fight somehow through them, transcend it, as opposed to kind of falling apart. And I feel so often women are shown as either strong or falling apart, you know, and you've got like the, the empowered woman or the kind of crumbling woman in a corner. And, and I think something that this show does does beautifully and that that the the female actors do beautifully actually is 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 to to be able to show and Jenny and Bartu does it beautifully too and to be able to just show that every muscle every fiber of their being is saying I cannot fall apart I cannot I must if there is nobody to catch me and that applies even to the you know the wealthy white woman who has far more resources and far more of a, a mattress underneath her than a bad analogy with a brothel worker but you know a far more <laughs> of a cushion underneath her than 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 the Asian women of the the Asian characters of the show, but you know I think that 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 that's a, a hugely powerful thing that that never runs out of steam, you know Absolutely. because we can all get quite bored of seeing people, <laughs> sort of just <laughs> so, uh, either succumb or walk through the world just being a tough bitch. Yes, you know, 100%. Um, 
Yeah. And I know we have to wrap up soon. Um, I do want you all to do a call to action so I can get put together a cool reel. But I mean, Perry, really quick before we do that wrapping, um, we had talked so many times on the podcast, but going off of that, you know, multifaceted, like no one is inherently good or evil in this show. Like everybody has so many sides to what they play. And you are just the patriarch of the entire show. And I'm wondering if you're that on and off air, a little more of a fun question for you. Um, but are you the dad of everybody off air also, or is it just on the show you have this gra gravitas to you? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't think I'm the dad. I think I'm just a friend, you know, that uh, I don't know. Maybe Miranda and uh, Olivia can answer that better. Uh, he's a homie. Harry's, he's a Harry's, homie. <laughs> yeah. The first yes. time I really had a conversation with him, he just literally paraglided off a mountain. Oh, and I was well. with my tiny daughter and you were there in your harness. And we were like, hi, we haven't formally met properly. I, I'm a, and you know, literally <laughs> just kind of come off her thing. So, yeah, I would say definitely buddy. <laughs> yeah, that tra that totally tracks. I feel the same way. Um, I would love to put together a reel with all of you just telling people to watch Netflix, to get season four underway, whatever the call to action is. So if you each of you could say something so I could put together something really cool to get fans to, to you know, action. <laughs> okay, real quick. Perry, why don't you start? Happy Lunar New Year, February 16th. Clean your house. Let Netflix in for a new world, a new beginning of, of prosperity. Hey, Xinian Kwaila, Gungxi, Gungxi. It's the year of the dragon. It's Bruce Lee, Brandon Lee's year. So come on over to Netflix. Binge us from seasons one to three after the launch of February 16th. And don't forget to double thumbs up us after you watch us. Yeah, watch us, love us like we love you. Double thumbs up. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so that. much. Okay, I'd right. love to talk to all of you again. Thank you, thank Thanks, you. Baby. Bye. 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 That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram or Facebook.